Hello, Mike. Hello, everyone. Hey, Kyle. So we got a great question in the iOS Lead Essentials community, and we thought it would be best to reply with a video. So how would you go about testing this span function without applicating code in the test site? So it's an enum with a bunch of cases. Today, yesterday, three days, and a custom date span. And depending on the case, this span function will return the date span, the start date and the end date for that specific case. So today is May 23. So the start date should be May 23 at midnight. And the end date should be today at 11 59 59 p.m. Okay. For his use case, he's using a GMT time zone. That's what he needs. So we are not going to be focusing on the design of this enum. Right. The goal is how to test it without applicating code in the test side. Let's say this function is in use throughout the app. And let's say there's a bug and you need to test it, fix the bug and not break clients. So, okay, let's create here our test. Date span tests. Let's run our initial failing test just to make sure our test target is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's running. Everything looks fine. So let's start with the first test. Let's open the date span here on the right side. Okay, let's start with the today case. As we said, the start date should be today at midnight GMT and the end date should be 11 59 59 p.m. GMT. Okay. So we're going to need an assertion. So let's say assert equal the result start date should be the start of today. So the result is the date span today span. Mm -hmm. So we need to import the module. And now we need to define what is the start of today. And what should we put here? And we could use the calendar to get start of day and let's say today. Right, currently. But that's exactly what he wants to avoid. Because look at this, the test and the production code now are exactly the same. So if you have a bug in the production side, you also have a bug in the test side. So you don't want to be duplicating code. You don't want your test to be exactly the same as implementation. Exactly. You want to test for a specific input, what is the specific output. Exactly. So that's the perfect scenario for a unit test. You give an input and you expect an output. And this should be deterministic. So instead of duplicating the production code here to generate the start of today, why don't we provide this date, the start of today? And we can create a date, a hard code date with the value we want. Mm -hmm. So we can set here the time interval since 1970. So we can use any service, any website, any converter that can give you the timestamp for a specific date. Right. Let's set here the start of today, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0. Mm -hmm. And there it is. This is the timestamp for today at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 GMT. Let's put the date here, run the tests, and it's passing. So this test now is proving that the today span is returning the correct value for today. But what is the problem now? What if we run this test tomorrow? This hard coded value will not work. And that's the problem with dates and <laughs> calendrical operations. You always have a relative value to test against. Because time never stops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if it moves, <laughs> you are out of sync and the test will fail. So this test 
works today and you say yes perfect and you run this test tomorrow and it doesn't work so there is this problem with dates because time never stops and you don't want to update this every day so what do you do you need to control time and the problem is right here right here we are getting the current date internally we need to take control of the current date to make this function more testable mm -hmm. and one way we can do it is to instead of create the date which is an impure operation the current date is always changing so it always has a different value so it's impure we can inject a date rather than creating it inside our function so we can move the current date as a dependency to the function and give a default value so we don't break clients of this function they are already using it right so let's run the test okay still passing but now we can inject today as a fixed date instead of a relative date that is always changing so let's see right now this is the current time so let me get the timestamp for right now and now we have a hard-coded today value that we can use to test our function let's run the test again and still works mm -hmm. so you can run this test tomorrow you can run this test 10 years from now and this test is still gonna pass and in the same way you can also test the end of today by getting the value for the end of today there it is okay see the assertion so this is the end date mm -hmm. which is end of today run the test okay it's passing which means this function is doing the work we expect and we are not duplicating the production code in the test side yep and you probably need to add more examples more samples to prove that your function actually works if you have something that is sensitive to time zone you can test that you can even inject a time zone here you can inject a calendar here you can test edge cases by giving more samples in the test site so we need to add enough examples here to make you feel confident that you covered edge cases like leap years time zones different types of calendars exactly and you don't want fragile tests you want your tests to be able to run today tomorrow at any time at any time zone so you inject the dependencies that you need to control and you can give default values so you don't break current clients and you make your apis easy to use so let's add one more test to test yesterday and let's leave as an exercise for you to implement the rest of the cases so let's test now yesterday so let's select a different date here let's say 22 at 12 39 47 and this is going to be our fixed today for this test mm -hmm. and we expect yesterday to be the 21st the start of the day there it is so we start off yesterday which is start of yesterday here and end of yesterday will be 23 59 59 okay let's run the tests boom failed okay let's see what's wrong okay so the date we were expecting to be in may but we got january so the month is the problem here yes so let's have a look at the yesterday case okay year day hour minute second but it's missing <laughs> okay. the month yeah there's the bug let's 
Let's run the test. Now it's passing. Okay, we found a bug here <laughs> while writing the test. That's it. You need to add enough samples to prove that your algorithm works, that it covers edge cases, and you don't need to duplicate production code. And as soon as you have enough samples and you're confident, you can refactor the production code as much as you can to simplify it. Exactly. You can extract some functions, some helper functions to remove the duplication and lighten up the span function. And that's it. That's how you test date spans without replicating code in the test site. Thanks for the question. We hope this video is going to help others as well. And happy coding. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. See ya. Thank you.